Hey guys, welcome to this video. So my name is Serge, uh, Serge Kamgen, and I'm going to be your instructor for this course. Um, if you're watching this video, it probably means you're enrolled to our course. Or maybe you're not enrolled, then just enjoy the video. But if you're enrolled, I'm going to walk you through some few things in this video and those things will help you set up your laptop uh, in preparation for the class so the session is six months we're going to spend six months together and there are some few softwares that you need on your computer so first we're going to check your computer and see if the requirement is uh, good for for the class and then after that, we're going to go through installing some software. And those software are softwares that will help you to go through the class smoothly. Okay. So, but before we get into the computer, now I have two computers here. I have a Windows computer and I have a Mac computer over here. I have the Windows here. I have the Mac. So, uh, I'm going to be switching screens. Like if I do this, uh, you're going to be seeing me and you're going to be seeing a computer. That is a Mac right there. And this is the Windows computer. So I'm going to help you to set that up. And that will be all the softwares that you need. We want to check if your laptop can take the class. We want to go through some few things that you need. To be able to have a successful ride now before we get into it i just want to congratulate you for taking these steps i don't know what pushed you to do this i've trained people from different walks of life university professor warehouse people cna registered nurse surgeon um finance people people with degree and people with zero degree stay at home mom and a lot of people come here with different reason when i was training the surgeon his idea was that he wanted something a little more flexibility with with a little bit of uh, flexibility instead of having to go to a hospital and execute a surgery so with the IT field he can work from home and then working from home he can have many jobs so the reason that uh, you are here can be different for some people it's money uh, for a lot of people it's money as you can see it scrolling down there those are salary and you can make a lot of money here and for some people, it's just a career change. It's just uh, the flexibility that the IT field is offering. Now, no matter what domain you're in, I don't think there is any exciting career, um, career path out there like the one we have in the IT field. There's a lot of room for improvement after taking this course and getting a job you can decide to move in different direction with your career which is not always the case with other domain that you will invest in so enough talking uh, we're going to be talking a lot uh, for the six months that we're going to spend together but for now we want to focus on just getting your laptop ready and getting you ready for the class okay Okay, so um, I'm going to start with Windows. We're going to check the, um, the requirement or the characteristic of this Windows computer. And then after that, we're going to jump to the Mac computer. So without wasting any time, I'm going to push the Windows computer here. So this is the Windows computer. Uh, if you hover your mouse down here on this yellow folder here, right? This yellow folder, you click on it. We call that File Explorer in Windows. So if you click on it and then you go on this PC, you do a right click and then you do Properties 
then you will see this information about your laptop. And here it's saying that I have a memory of 16 gig. Now for your memory here, if you have anything above six, then you're fine. Okay. Anything above six is good. Now, um, here it says system 64 bit. It should say system 64 bit for yours. And what else? The speed. This is the speed when they say processor is the speed of your CPU. Mine say 1.8 to 2.3. Uh, anything around 1.7 and up should be good. Should be good over there. Now, after checking this, you can close it. And then on the this PC, instead of right click now, you do the left click. When you do the left click on this PC, you will see this OS C drive, which is your hard drive. And my hard drive here has 880 gig free. Now, if your hard drive had less than 250 gig free here, then you're a little bit in trouble, right? So it has to have at least 250 gig free. Now, can you do it with less? Yes, but it's going to be a hassle because you will have to constantly clean up your hard drive, clean up your hard drive. And I don't want you to focus on that. I want you to focus on getting the knowledge so that you can grow your skills instead of worrying about all this. Now that's for the windows. Uh, if you check that and then it looks like that, then you should be good. So anything above 250 gig free here is good. Okay. Now I have 800. Now if you have more than 250, you're fine. So that's it for windows. Let's move to the Mac people and see how they can check their system as well. So this is the Mac. For the Mac, you just need to go here at the extreme, extreme up here. You see how my mouse is moving at the extreme up, right, uh, up left. Click on that Mac sign and then click on about this Mac. Then you will see this information display and uh, can I make this bigger? No. Okay. I wanted to make it bigger for you, but there's no way I can do that. So if you look here, you will see that my processor here is 2.4. And I told you guys anything 1.7 or 1.8 and up is good. So 2.4 is definitely good. Memory should be 6 and up. So 16 is definitely good. So that's my memory there. That's the speed of my CPU. And then up here, if you click on storage, then you will see your storage. My, I have 1.6 terabyte available. If you have anything more than 250 gig available, then you're good. So for me, 1.6 terabyte, that's a lot of space, right? So that's how you check the information on your computer. Hope everybody is good with that. Now, if you don't understand how to do that, remember, you can always go on YouTube and check anything that we're doing here. If my video is not very clear, you can go on YouTube and say how to check my max memory, how to, uh, I don't know, install uh, a software on my Mac. So anything you want, you can go online and figure it out okay okay so now what i'm going to do is move into a different uh part of this video which is downloading some software that we need for this class so let me move back to my windows computer so this is my windows computer and i'm going to download some few software here and those are the software that we're going to use after i downloaded it on windows then i'm going to move to the mac and do the same so you will have microsoft edge 
or whatever you have as a browser, open it on your Windows computer and then say download Chrome. Download Chrome and you click on download now. And you see this is the page where we need to download. You can scroll up and down to see where is the download button. So I'm going to click on download and this is it downloading. Yours can be downloading somewhere up here, wherever it is downloading, just wait for it to be finished and then you can click on it. So I'm going to click on it here. And it's asking me, do you want this program to make change to your device? Of course, we have to say yes. If we say no, then we will not download, right? So let me say yes. And it's going to download. Make Chrome your own. No, we don't need to worry about that. So what I want us to do is after it download and it open like that, or let me close it. So it's done installing. That's why you're seeing it right here on your desktop. Earlier, we didn't have it. So if you do a right click on it, right click, the right click on your mouse, that's what I'm doing. Uh, you can say pin to taskbar. Look at that, pin to taskbar. When you do that, it appears down here on your taskbar. So all this whole area down here on your computer is called the taskbar. So that's it right there. And we're going to open it. So we're just going to click on it and it's going to open. And we're going to click on this little dot dot here right here on the corner this three dot dot let's click on that and we're going to go to settings and we're going to scroll up scroll up uh i'm looking for the default browser scroll up google chrome is your default browser Now, if Google Chrome is not your default browser, it should say it here, default browser. It should say it here, what is your default browser? If it's not Google Chrome, then change it to Google Chrome, okay? All right, so let me close this. That is Google Chrome. And again, everything I'm doing here, if you're not able to do it at home, don't panic, just bring it in class, okay? Just bring it in class. If you go on YouTube, let's say you, you, you're having trouble and then you go on YouTube to check a video on how to do that and you're still not able to, uh, you can send a message in the WhatsApp group with a picture of the error that you're having or you can just simply bring it in class, okay? I would rather you go the route of YouTube because and, the, and uh, the route of the WhatsApp group because if everybody bring their issue in class, then we will not be able to move in class, right? We will spend the whole time solving issue. So if we have the WhatsApp group where we can solve some of this problem, it will be better, okay? So try to solve it yourself, do some research online. If you can't find anything, post it in the WhatsApp group and somebody will definitely help you. Now, why am I sending you to start doing research online? Because that's going to help you a lot. Not just uh, while installing this, throughout the course, you need to be able to do some research when you can't find a solution to a problem, right? And even tomorrow at work, before you call somebody for help, you want to be able to do a little bit of research on your own. And then uh, when you can't find the solution, then that's when you reach out for help. So if something doesn't work here, don't just rush and get somebody to uh, fix it for you because they're going to come on your desktop. They're going to click there, click there. But at the end, you don't know what happened, right? You don't know 
what was the issue. So let's continue here. We have Chrome install. We're going to install something else. And again, this is still Windows. After installing all this, we're going to go install on the Mac. So the next thing that I want to install here is TeamViewer. And what is TeamViewer? TeamViewer is just a tool that you can use to see somebody's desktop at a distance, right? So I type TeamViewer in Google and I'm going to go to download. And you see different version here, Windows, Mac, Linux. So this is a Windows computer. So we're going to click on Windows. And then when we click on Windows, we need to scroll down where it says download TeamViewer. And it's downloading now. So when I click on download TeamViewer, this is it down here. So I'm going to click on it so that the installation can start. I'm just going to say accept next. And of course, it's asking this question again. Do you want TeamViewer to make changes on your computer? Of course, we have to say yes. Okay, so here we need to uh, watch out. Um, we need to choose the personal use, not the professional use. So the personal use is the middle one. You check that and then click finish. So this is Chimjo. Let me close it so that we can see how it look like on the desktop. Let me close everything. And this is Chimjo. It show like this on your desktop when you install it. So if you double click on it, it will open like this. So let's say you have a problem and I want to access this your computer. I'm going to ask you what is your team viewer IG. You will give me the IG and I'll put it here, right? I'll put it here. When I put it here, then I click connect. It's going to ask for the password. When you give me the password and I enter it there, then you are now we can be on the phone and I'm seeing your screen. So both of us are seeing the same screen and it doesn't matter where you are. You can be here and somebody is all the way in China. You can use Timjur to see their screen all the way in China, right? All the way in China. Okay. So that's it for TeamViewer. So TeamViewer is just going to help us to help each other. If you say you have a problem on your screen, it will be easier for me if I can see exactly what is going on on your screen. And this is what is going to help us to do that. Now, the next thing that I want us to download is called VirtualBox. And what is VirtualBox? VirtualBox is just a software. What did I do? So, I was supposed to go on Google to type it. Sorry, guys. Sorry. So, let me say virtual box. Just like the name say, it's a box that you can use to create virtual computer. If not, we will need to buy like 10 computers for this class. But to avoid buying so many computers, which is going to be difficult to manage, difficult to carry, and very expensive. We can use VirtualBox and then install small, small virtual machine in that VirtualBox. So that will avoid us having to buy many machines. So here I'm going to click on download. Uh, when you click on download, it will bring you to this page. Let me see if I can make it a little bigger. Control plus plus. When you do, when you press Control key down and you press plus, it makes your windows a little bigger. Or for to make it smaller, you can say Control and then minus. Okay. So on this download page of VirtualBox, you can look down here and you see different version. This is for Windows. This is for Mac people. This is for Linux people, and this is for Solaris people. 
but we're doing it on Windows, so we're going to click on the Windows host. In a minute, when I do it in Mac, we're probably going to choose this one. So let me go on Windows host. And this is it downloading down here. It's pretty fast here. It's done downloading. Now, if yours is a little bit slow, don't freak out. Just wait and let it go smoothly. Okay. All right. So I'm going to click on it. And the installation will start automatically. I say next, 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 yes, install. Of course, we need to say yes. So it's installing now. And we're going to say finish. So every question it asks you, just click on install, next, install, next, install, next. Okay um so let me close this page now and you will see virtual box look like this if it didn't open that's fine let me close it so when you install virtual box it will look like this on your desktop a a blue cube right that's a virtual box it's a box in which we want to create virtual machines or virtual linux servers so if you double click on it this is how it opens. So if you just open like this, then very good job to you. Very good job. All right. So um, on top of this, I think that's it pretty much. There are many other things that we want to be uh, working on. But for now, this should do it. So to connect to a Linux server, for example, we want to use a tools on your Windows computer called PowerShell. And what is that PowerShell? Let me go on the search bar down here and I type power. Just by typing power, you will see where it says PowerShell, Windows PowerShell. Let me click on it. And you should see this nice blue screen, right? Nice blue screen. If that writing is very small, you can do Control Plus. Uh, Control Plus didn't work. <laughs> So let me do a right click here and then go to properties and then choose 24 here and then choose OK. Yep, that's how you make it bigger. So you do a right click here, right click on your mouse, properties, and then you change the size here, right? Mine is on 24. You can put 28 or based on how your eyes is okay i can see that's why i make it big so this is a powershell which is almost like a command line in windows so in windows even though you're using your mouse you can use the command too to do stuff right you don't need to use a mouse you can use a command so from here I want us to experiment logging into a Linux server. So let's do that. To log into a Linux server, we're going to say SSH uh, student at just like arrow bars at Unix. Make sure you don't make a mistake while typing this. If not, it's not going to work. So SSH, you put a space. You type student at Unix trainings, trainings. We need a S here. Trainings, U-N-I-X-T-R-E-I-N-I-N-G-S dot T-K. I'm going to hit enter. And you see, it's asking me a question here. Are you sure you want to connect? I'm going to say yes yes sir or yes ma'am now it's asking student at unix training password now watch out i'm going to type school one it's not going to show here that it's typing but it's taking it right so the password is school s c h o o l one and then I hit enter and it show me student 
add localhost and then it show me a dollar sign here so that means you're logging to a linux server and you can type date here to check the date on that linux server oh no the date is showing thursday january do you think that date is right i don't think so january 2020 when you look down here on my computer this is the 21st of october so the date on my server is wrong but um that's not the object of this video this video was just to show you how you can log into a linux server and what is this linux server that we log on to is the school linux server so we're going to be able to log into this server do some few practice while we're waiting to have our own personal server and where will that our own personal server be it will be in virtual box so if i minimize this our server will be in here so there will be another video out there that will show you how to get your own linux server in this virtual box so that's it for this video um i don't want to do a whole lot of stuff here on a linux server i'm running a command date date in linux compared to windows linux we tap command to do anything in windows we use a mouse to click but in linux we use command so here if i want to clear my screen for example i just tap the word clear and then i hit enter and boom it cleans everything right and what else can i type here i can type cal cal will show me the calendar and again it's showing me the wrong calendar it's showing me that this is january month which is not good right that's not good now i can type uptime and uptime show me how long this server have been up and running it's been up and running how many days 31 days and 19 hours that is how long this server have been up and running just by tapping up time okay so i'm going to exit here exit would take us out of that linux server so we are now out of the linux server if i tap another exit that powershell will disappear okay okay so uh that's pretty much it in windows if you do this then you're ready to rock and roll but if you're not able to do it that's fine post your trouble or your question in the whatsapp group and let's see if somebody can help you with that okay all right so for windows people you're good let's move now to the mac people the mac people they think that they are the big shots right yeah let's go to the mac people okay so i'm going to switch my screen here to mac uh where did i switch it no this is not mac this is me <laughs> okay let me go here uh here okay we got there okay so that's my mac screen and we're going to do the same thing we do we did in windows so we check our mac uh, requirement already now we want to install all the software right we're going to install all the software uh, hang on one second let me check something here
Okay, so here, sorry for that. Here we are on the Mac and we're just going to download Google Chrome. To do that, we need to go on Safari and then we need to type here Google Chrome. Now, I have it downloaded already on this Mac, but we're just going to go through the motion, okay? Google Chrome. I'm typing that on the Safari, which is the internet page for Mac. I'm going to say download now. And download Chrome. So it's downloading. And it's showing me that you see that dancing folder here showing you that something new is there. So I'm going to click on that. And this is it right here. I'm going to click on it. Okay, it's not showing. So let me go to Finder. Finder here is almost like uh, File Explorer in Windows, right? So let me click on Finder. And uh, Finder. Where is the download folder? Uh, let me close this and go to download and this is google chrome here i'm going to double click on it and when you double click on it the dot dmg file for chrome it just start installing as you can see here so now you say we need to double click here and that's it so now chrome is installed we can use chrome now on this computer right chrome is installed this is it down here if you don't see it down here you can go to finder and uh you can go to down here you will see whatever is installed this is chrome and when i double click there this is it right here so now you have Chrome here and you can open any page that you want. So my looks a little different because it was already installed. So when you open Chrome, it should open pages like this, which is Google Chrome, right? Why do I want us to install Google Chrome? Because it's the best browser, not the best, but it's more friendly, right? User friendly. So you have Google Chrome, you have Mozilla Firefox, which is very good too. Internet Explorer is the worst browser. So now that we have uh, Google Chrome, we can use it to open any program. We don't need to use Safari anymore. We use Google Chrome. So the next thing is to install Team Viewer. So I'm going to say Team viewer and i'm going to click on download and here we cannot choose windows anymore right we're going to choose mac and we're going to go down here and click on download this is it downloading that's it downloading down there and i'm just going to click on it and the installation will start this is it here starting Please double click the icon to start Team Viewer. Sometimes you need to be a good reader too. You need to read. So it says, Welcome to the Team Viewer installer. We're going to say continue. It says, Team Viewer and license. Continue. Agree. Install. Now it wants my password. You, you know, that's the map thing for security right uh so i'm putting my finger because i use my finger print to log into the computer so now it is installed and this is ginger opening with the ig and the password the color might look different but don't 
don't get hooked up with the color okay don't get hooked up with the color so i'm going to close this and i'm going to close this move to trash yes so chip viewing thing store this is it down here and if you install it and you can't see it again you can always go to finder here uh, where's the finder if you, you can go to finder or you can go to this loop up here you see the loop up here the search you can type the chain viewer if you tap the chain viewer it's going to open for you okay all right so anything that you install you can go on this little loop up here like a search click on it and then search for whatever you want let's say i want google chrome then i can go up there search for it and it will open like you're saying here okay so that's it we install google chrome we install chain viewer the next thing is virtual box so i'm going to say virtual box again virtual box is already on this laptop so we're just going to go through the motion i'm going to click on download and here we need to make sure we choose the os x host right that's the mac one not the windows one so this is it downloading down here and when it's done we're going to click on it so let's wait okay it looks like it's done let's click on it it is installing now So you say double click on the on this icon. Let's double click. And I'm gonna say continue. Continue. Install. It wants my fingerprint or your password if you don't have fingerprint set up on your Mac. It's gonna ask for your password. So it's installing now. okay i think it's good so i'm gonna close it move to trash yes so virtual box is installed and again if you don't see it anywhere here to access it you can go up here and click on that little loop there for search that's like a search area so we can say virtual box and you will see virtual box show up here you just kind of double click on it and it should be able to open this is it open so it doesn't look us doesn't look like this right i know us is not looking like this let me show you how us look like um where's that my windows computer so us looks more like this right with nothing on this side but over here as you can see i've already installed a lot of virtual machines all these are virtual machines that i have installed in virtual box that's why you see mine like this so if yours is not looking like this don't worry about it okay if you can install it and open it then you're good to go now in the mac world do we have powershell no we don't have powershell you remember the tool that we use in windows to log in to uh, a linux server right the mac has something called the terminal so let's go on the search bar up here and type terminal and then hit enter and you will see a tiny screen appear like this it is very tiny you can press the command key and then a plus sign to make it a little bigger so i'm just pressing on a plus sign many times here to make it bigger so this is the terminal i'm just carrying it with a mouse to move it where i want it to be so this is the terminal i'm hitting enter here enter on my key so this is the terminal for the mac people and to log into the linux server is exactly the same way we did earlier in powershell with windows so it's going to be ssh 
student at unix trainings dot and i hit enter and it's asking me for the password but for you guys that are logging in for the first time it's when they ask you the question that the access window and we type yes so if you ask that question here in the mac it's going to ask that question when it asks are you sure you want to continue just type on your keyboard yes and hit enter and it will ask you for the password now when it asks you for the password the password is school one which means s c h o o l one and then you hit enter now when you're typing the password here it's not going to show you but it's taking it okay don't freak out like i'm typing school one and it's not showing right just keep typing it it's taking it for security reason it doesn't want to show it all right so now you log into the linux server if you hit enter here you will see that the same thing that we we're seeing in window student at localhost and a quick dollar sign there and we can type date and since it's the same server that we log into look at that it's still showing the date that we saw earlier we can say cal and it's still showing the wrong calendar we can say uptime and it's still showing us that the server have been up 31 days and 19 hours 18 minutes right so that's the linux server for you and uh, if you say exit you will exit the linux server and if you say another exit you will exit the terminal process completed i'm gonna hit uh, it says connection close type another exit it says process completed but it's not moving so i'm just going to close it okay okay so that's it with the mac that's it with the windows computer um get yourself ready log into your portal go in the back end you're going to see week one week two you're going to see week three um the material will be uploaded in those week as we keep moving forward right go back there uh click on those week navigate around make sure uh, you can click anywhere and see the information check also make sure that you see the link that you need to click to join the class online right so let me let's take a look on that link so i'm going to try to uh <clears throat> sorry i'm going to try to log into my back end uh, real quick here and then we're going to see how what i'm talking about here in terms of the link so So I'm trying to uh, log in real quick so that I can show you guys what I'm talking about. Um, I'm going to log in here. so uh what computer is this it's the mac so let me switch to the mac um right here okay <clears throat> sorry so when you log in to uh your, your user account you will see something that look like this this is your account when you log in and you might be asking login where when you were enrolling for the class you were able to create an account for yourself so when you use that account to log in 
you should see something that looks like this for us it will probably be just one course and whatever course it is your courses whatever course it is you want to click on it for example i'm clicking on october 2020 and this page will open which is showing you how many days is left for the class to start or maybe the class have started already and if you scroll down you will see where it says join us for a live zoom class click the zoom logo below to join the class online so you can click here or you can click here right so let me click on that and see what happened so now it says open zoom i'm gonna say open zoom or launch meeting click open zoom the us on the dialog show by your browser if you don't see a dialog click launch meeting below so i'm gonna click launch meeting or oh, let me open it here it says we need to click here click open meeting now for a lot of you when you click that nothing happened you must see this don't have zoom client installed let's click on download now so we're going to click on download now so that we can download it so this is it downloading when it's done i'm going to click on it and and now is asking me for the meeting password and what is the meeting password if you go back to your login page where is it uh, right here this is the password right when you when you log in here it has the password october for example this one is october 26 2020. So uh, let me minimize this. October OCT 26, 2020. I'm going to click join. And it says here Linux DevOps and AWS training session. October 26, 2020, Mondays and Tuesdays, 6.30 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. He said this is a recurring meeting, and he says waiting for the host to start meeting. So this is just because I haven't started the meeting. So when you launch like that on the day of the class, and it's sitting on this screen, you just need to wait a couple minutes. When as soon as I launch the meeting, you want to be able to see uh, the meeting open on your computer and you will be able to have access to the meeting. So let me see if I can launch that meeting real quick and I'll show you something. trying to uh, uh, launch that meeting here. Just give me a second.
Okay, so uh, as I was saying, I'm trying to log in here. And when I launch the meeting, you will see what will happen to your screen. So let me log in here. And I'm going to launch the meeting. Let me launch that now. Watch carefully what is going to happen there. So when I say start the meeting, I started the meeting. So when I start the meeting, that screen that you're seeing there is going to change. Look at that. So it's saying join with doubt video, join with video. I want you to join to, with video, right? I want to be able to see people in class uh, when they're active in class, right? Join with video. So now it says, please wait the meeting host will let you in soon. So this is where I'm going to receive a notification that you want to join the class. And when I see the notification and I see that you are allowed to take this class, I'm going to uh, admit you in class. So let me do that and you will see how your screen will change. So I just admitted that person in class and now the person is in class, right? So here you will have this screen that show you here join with computer audio you want to click on that then you should be in class now look at the screen here this is your video up here right this is your video up here if you look here and it doesn't show your name look at my name here search camgen but if yours doesn't show your name just do a right click on that your video uh, or you can click on this little button here and then you click on rename and then make sure you put your name. Sometimes people get removed from class because their name is not recognized, right? So when you join the class, you will see it like this. And then right now you're seeing just your video up here. And as more people join the class, you're going to see their video lined up here. So that's it. That's how you use uh, Zoom to join the class online. All right. So let's say the class is over and you want to finish. You can click here on leave. If you want to send a chat message, you can type here on chat and on chat. And then you type your chat message here. You can say hi. And when you hit enter, let me say hi. And then you hit enter there. Everybody that is in class will, saw, will see that message hi. So if I say hello, search, and I hit enter, see, I just responded to your message. So that is what we're going to use for the class. We want to use this chat a lot. Most of the time, uh, we don't use the microphone in class. Why? Because sometimes people have a lot of noise in the background. So you don't want to open your microphone if you have a lot of noise in the background as it would disturb people in class, okay? All right, uh, I don't know if I forgot something, but if you have any question, please post it in the WhatsApp group. Um, Somebody is going to respond and then uh, guide you through. All right, so I'm going to click on leave meeting here. This is when the class is over and you want to leave. Then you can close it right you can close it so that's it that's it for this video i didn't want it to be too long but it looks like it got a little long there so uh watch it set up your computer get yourself ready uh so that when we start you start on the right path okay all right thank you so much and i'll see you in class bye bye